Good science always, uh, as you try to answer questions, opens the more questions. And uh, that's certainly been true of this type of investigation. One of the interesting aspects is to have our students engaged with us in that because they understand very quickly that, oh, we don't have all the answers. And sure, you can read about lava in textbooks and see it on the Discovery Channel and things like that. But there are many unknowns, especially when it comes down to the details of how this material behaves and even how to interpret an old lava flow that no one has seen actually actively flowing. These are things that we need to explore and that our project is really making some contributions to. The contrast between our approaches and uh, the communities that we come from and our experience and, and the departments that we're part of, uh, things just work differently. And it gives you a lot of faith in just what a modern university is all about uh, to see that actually the place is stronger for having these multiple perspectives. And just to scale that down, it, when we bring our students, our science students and our art students together and see them communicating, I think it becomes you know, extremely clear that you know, in a liberal arts education, for example, that being able to appreciate these different perspectives is really important and what those students bring to the project, their own perspectives, their own uh, biases and so forth, well, they, they have to show them to one another. And uh, those contributions really add up to something more than just the, the sum of the parts. I saw an email over the summer that was um, asking if anyone was interested in volunteering with the Lava Project, um, that they could come by and help out and see what we do. And I shoot them an email, and next thing you know, I'm down here. and. It's all history after that, but I'm actually looking into um, studying what happens when lava pours off of cliffs, and we can simulate that here by creating a step and pouring the lava over um, like a drop-off. So it's interesting how easily you can manipulate the conditions here and create an experiment catered to what any scientist would need to study and understand. Last semester, um, I was taking a class for petrology, and um, I was able to use the experience that I had at the Lava Project to compare um, the melting rates of rhyolite and basalt, which are two felsic and mafic kinds of lava. And I was able to build the experiment from the ground up, and I was able to be really hands-on with it. And that's something that not many universities can offer you, being able to pour lava, do the experiment all the way through end to end and provide you with the experience of being able to carry out the experiment the whole way. It's a really great opportunity. <laughs> when I toured Syracuse, I did one of the open houses and they were like, you know, one of the professors is, you know, going to be pouring lava later this afternoon. You should go down to Comart, especially if you're a sculpture major and you should really, you know, check that out. It's really interesting. It's something new that no one else is doing. So I went down there and, um, you know, Bob, he actually gave me like a box of lava and he was like, you know, if you, if you come to Syracuse, you can work on the lava project with me. And so when I was a sophomore, we started, um, I started working with him. I do a lot of, you know, behind the scenes work. I help, you know, Bob and Noah and Jeff and anyone else we happen to be working with at the time to uh, just make sure everything's in order and everyone has what they need. And it's, it's really cool to be able to see practicing artists and especially to be able to work with them and to say that I've been on a project of such a large scale and meet the people that are working alongside Bob and Jeff. It, it's, it's really, really cool. So people ask me what I do and I'm like, I'm a lavalologist. You know, it doesn't really mean anything to them, but it's like, you know, I go into a deeper explanation of what that is. And it's like, whoa. That's cool. You know, most people don't even believe me until they see it. Well, I started um, in 2009, so I've been there every step of the way, um, and I've seen how the project has evolved over the past you know, five years since we started. So as the years have gone on, I've become more experienced with running the furnace. Uh, it's gotten to the point where the majority of the pours are run by me, and Bob just kind of steps back.
So I've been kind of taking on the role that Bob played in the beginning, where he was running the furnace, loading it, setting up the experiments, so he can kind of step back and hopefully work his way into his art practice and start to develop that more. Um, and then I can just kind of sit in the background, keep the science aspect of things going, and we can move it forward. As far as art practice goes, kind of the span of this project and how long it really takes to put something like this together, it's not, you know, a year. You know, being a younger adult, everything seems to happen in you know, like a six to 12 month span where this is, you know, one to who knows how many years it's going to take. Um, you know, and you really just have to keep on looking towards the end product. You know, you can, I'm a professional lava pourer, essentially. How often do you get to say that? Um, you know, my expertise is melting things. You know, I love being referred to as an expert. You know, when we work with various researchers, they're like, I don't know, what do you think? And it's like, oh, right, I am an expert on this. Okay, this is what I think, you know, and they go on. And that feels really great. You, you're never sure when you're working with, uh, with any of the students what, what they're thinking at any given time, but the uh, amount of brain space this kid has given to thinking about this is amazing. And he is, he's not just an assistant. I mean, he's become a, a partner with us in figuring out how to do this. And that's amazing, I think, for any teacher. You know, uh, is when you get that level of engagement and that level of commitment um, that, that he's thinking about this, um, you know, at off, at off times, amazing. The thing that drives me that in the late hours that we work, the one thing I hold out for is there's going to be a child that sees what we're doing, and it would only take one or two. That maybe it affects them enough, and they're that wowed by it that they go into science. And maybe, maybe that's the kid that grows up to answer the big questions or to solve the big problems that we're facing, um, and that keeps me in it for the long haul.